to show up in the world as like this, the, this massive coach that I want to be, you know, cause I've got some really good mentors right now and they are out there just killing it. They're worth, I mean, Dave Meltzer, you know, mm. that guy's worth over a hundred million dollars. Right. Wow. And he, he has access to anybody on the planet mm. and he spends time with me every two weeks to talk to me. Right. So mm. there's this looking at, you know, sh learning how to just, energetically i would say not to be woo woo but energetically show up in the world as that kind of man who's out there doing those kind of big things and being yeah. such a, a mentor and a philanthropist and a business a deal maker and all that stuff and then the marketing side then i've got my own personal growth side mm. physical health all that good stuff man perfect sounds sounds like you're you're absolutely on it welcome back hustlers you are here because well you are a very curious person that's why you're here just like me because i want to know the secrets the lifestyles the mindsets and the beliefs of people who have created extraordinary success in their lives so we can follow in their footsteps and achieve the same results today i'm joined by somebody who's a coach who's a mentor he uh, actually works with entrepreneurs he works with people with childhood trauma and and uh, his goal is to essentially help you accelerate your life and take it to the next level. His experience is very extensive. He is connected with some really, really powerful people in the world. He's got some great mentors and the energy he brings is insane. I mean, it jumps out and just punches you in the face. You have nowhere to hide. You have nowhere to run. This is going to be amazing i've been really looking forward to this with that let me introduce you to my very very good friend mr william kelly welcome well, william yeah can't say it. can't say it i'm so excited william welcome to the show <laughs> you got it hello hey man it's good to be here man thanks for having me on your show this is going to be a, a great talk you know we're going to talk about a lot of different things today you know i know that you wanted to talk about uh maybe how to develop new habits and reprogram like uh, new behaviors into your life. And there are so many cool things that are wrapped around that on both sides of it. So maybe we'll get some time to explore all of that stuff and, and, and give you some really, really good tips. I've got some notes here about some cool things I want to share with your audience. So, yeah. Love it. Love it. It's a pleasure to have you on. And I think this is uh, going to be a really special conversation because what we're going to talk about, I think we, we, we just mentioned that before we started recording, is the fact that it, it applies to my life right now, like where I am right now as well. So uh, quite a lot of stuff we're going to be talking about, I'm actually going to be taking on board and implementing myself and hopefully reporting back with some awesome results. So let's get on with it. <laughs> yeah, good. Because I think what we can do is we can have, uh, so some of the examples that I'm going to use throughout, we can use your life as maybe... Um, like the example of what we're going through and we can apply it maybe directly to yourself. Um, or we can maybe talk about some of the things that you think your audience might be struggling with and we can use some of those examples. But I have a suspicion if people are following you because people are following you, that some of the challenges and successes that you're having are probably pretty much in alignment with what some of the things your audience are going through as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're very right there. And I think people, need to realize just one thing that they need to leave their ego out of the door right now and uh, just open up because I'm going to show up totally vulnerable. Uh, like we said, we're going to be using examples from my personal life. Um, so, uh, you know, total transparency, total vulnerability. And uh, I, I invite people to do the same. Let's do it. Good. Awesome. Do so William, um, let's, let's just go back a step. Okay. Talk to us about how you got started on this awesome journey where you are connected with some really, really powerful people. You, there are amazing people in the world who are doing absolutely incredible things and they're mentoring you. You have them as your own personal mentors and you are actually there creating change, real lasting change in people's lives. Like the message you got this morning on Facebook about this lady who said, look, I turned my whole life around because of this person. So what I'm really interested in is like how you actually got started going down the, that road. This is a great story. I love it. I'm going to keep it as brief as possible because we got some really cool stuff to get to here. But <laughs> yeah. I was homeless 20 years ago. I'm not kidding you, brother. Wow. I, I lived on the streets and I was a drug addict and I was an alcoholic. And I've, I was fortunate to have some good people in my life and uh, somebody brought me through, they introduced me to neuro-linguistic programming, behavioral science and hypnosis. 
And through that, I got myself off of the streets and I got myself back into the workforce and wow. off of drugs and alcohol, right? But the real change, I would say, for me, the, the turning point was about three years ago, right? We were both introduced to someone you know as Jeff Woods, right? Oh, yeah. And that was the turning point for me when I just decided I'm going to take everything I've ever learned and ever, ever experienced in life and apply it in this whole new direction, right? I mean, I grew up as a shy kid, like an outcast, you know, with no father and no discipline and not a lot of success in life. You see where that path went, right? But when I, st I started realizing that, uh, you know, finding mentors is easy to do. People will respond to you and you can, you can change and up level your circle of friends. Mm. You know, you can, you can get rid of people who are unresourceful to you and who are not serving you in life. And you can go and seek out mentors and people who are in alignment with what you're, with, you're into. Right. And so when I started going down that path, that really helped the, like the coach and the mentor inside of me come out. And that's when I really stepped into my power, when I just realized, wow, I'm, I'm in this beautiful space right now, right, where I have mentors and I have people that I'm menteeing. Right? So that's where the beautiful growth happens there. So that's pretty much my, the quick little version of my story. And so here we are today and, um, you know, working on building my, my empire, which just means really for me, going out and helping millions and millions of people, you know. And choosing the people who I help very carefully as well. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, really powerful. I mean, you mentioned Dave Meltzer, who's one of your mentors. Um, and, you know, th there's, there's so many others that you're mentored, uh, being mentored by as well, including Jeff Woods. Um, but the fact is that you were able to change something within yourself that allowed you down the path of growth. Yeah. And that's something, yeah, that's something I think, you know, a lot of people struggle with. How do you change your inside? It's easy to change other things around you. You know, you can buy a new clothes, you can buy a new car, you can, you know, rent a different place, but changing the inside, that's where the real struggle is. So, you know, kudos to you, my friend, you really have created amazing results. You're doing millions in, in your business uh, and it's, it's just taking off. So, you know, um, I, I really wanted to uh, just highlight that the fact that it comes from changing on the inside and, and you've done a tremendous job there. Here's where the conversation gets really interesting. Mm. Right? This is where it all starts. And I get really pumped up and jacked up and excited about this stuff because you are the one that's in charge of this up here, right? Nobody else is. Mm. And, and most people just don't realize that we can take charge of this, this mind that we have and point it in the right direction. There's so many moving parts here, right? You know, we can talk about, okay, so yes, you're in charge of your brain, but how do you actually start making some of these changes, right? And it, for me, it all starts with clarity. You know, we're going to talk about clarity for a second because it relates to reprogramming your, your habits and your behaviors and changing your mindset. It, that, the clarity is the first step to that, though. And, you know, for, so for me, clarity is, and I teach this to everybody, and the people that I know who are helping me, who have the most success, practice this process right and the people who i'm helping who are the most successful practice this process and it's just really about getting clear on what you want <clears throat> okay so it's what's broken what's not working you know mm -hmm. what's not working in your life and i mean financially physically spiritually right and with your relationships and your business what's not working what are the problems we're all pretty aware of what those are but if we look at that for a second that's only half of the puzzle here. It's only half of the first piece. The second half is what do you want instead of that? Like instead of all of those problems, if you could use your imagination, forget about how to make it possible. What do you want instead of all of that? And most people haven't given that a lot of thought, you know, and for a variety of reasons, they just don't think it's possible or they just have what I call like a limited mindset. They have a bunch of limiting beliefs that are keeping their vision of what's possible really small. In fact, most people are just trying to escape their problems that we talked about a second ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big one. That's a yeah. big one. Mm. So what do you want instead of that? Okay. Mm. Right. And from there we start talking about, let's put that on paper. Let's call that like a clarity manifesto. Let's call it a, an ideal day. This version of your future self, which is getting the results you want to get in life. And, and all of the five, seven buckets, whatever you want to call them, spiritually, financially, emotionally, relationships, right, business, right? 
what does that look like? What does your character look like? Who is the man or the woman that you want to become? What are those, what are those qualities? You know, we're all evolving, my friend. We're all evolving. So we don't want to end up in 10 years or 30 years going, where am I? How did I get here? This is not where I wanted to be. We know we're changing. You're not the same person you were 20 years ago, right? But did you get here by choice and intention? Did you design this path and, and take action towards becoming this person and having this life that you have right now? And you know maybe it is where you wanna be, right? In all of those areas. But I suspect there might be some stuff we can talk about here, which is cool. But that's where we start talking about designing the future. We're talking about clarity right now. Mm. Where are you? What's not working? What do you want instead? And then write yeah. that down. And the process I'm talking about here. So that's the concept, right? process is writing this down on paper and looking at it every day now we're starting to talk about getting into habit building because i said look at it every day looking mm -hmm. at it every day look at it every day look at it every day see repetition right it starts to set up this wonderful place in your mind where even if you don't know how to get to that place that ideal day that clear vision of who you want to be in the future how you want your life to look, your unconscious mind is watching. And it's gonna to start to affect your behaviors and your actions and how you show up in the world. It's gonna to start to inform the decisions that you make, the things you say yes to, and the things you say no to. It gives you that self-awareness to say, am I moving closer to or further away from this vision I've created for myself? And because I'm looking at it every day and I'm reading it and I'm getting in touch with it, I know where I'm going. I know who I wanna become. It's, it's fantastic because if some of my clients and some of the people I mentor in days, I had a guy call me up and say, dude, I just have to share this with you. Like we wrote that clarity manifesto of my ideal day and I just experienced it. And that was like two weeks since we wrote it. Wow. And yeah. He just got a glimpse of it. Right. Yeah. But, and for, and, and it, but it's a process. It's not something that we just do. It's, it's this lifelong journey of knowing what we want and setting that future vision for ourselves and our businesses. Hmm. Right? And looking at that every day. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm guessing the secret here really is the everyday part. Yeah. And even if it's not every day, okay, we're talking more about repetition now, right? Repetition doesn't have to be every day. I like it to be every day. If, if you're too busy and you don't have time for it, or if you tell yourself you're too busy and you don't have time for it, what, how much do you have time for? Can mm. you do it once a week, mm. twice a week, three times a week, seven days a week, whatever it is for you? It's getting clear on what you want and taking some time for yourself, you know, and, and mapping out what the, what the future looks like for you as a human being and, you, and for your business and for the people around you as well. What do you want to create in the world? And how often you look at that thing, that vision, is going to determine how quickly you get it. Mm. Because it's about, you've probably heard keeping your attention, right, your attention on your intentions. These are my intentions. I don't even have to know how to get there yet. All I have to know is what I want. I don't mm. care if it's possible. I'm just going to write down what I want. And I'm going to keep looking at that and thinking about that. You know, some people talk about the law of attraction. Yeah. I'm, I know there's a woo-woo side of it. It's a little woo-woo like, uh, if I think about it, I'll just get it and the universe will bring it to me. Well, there, maybe there's something to that. I don't know, right? But what I do know is that your brain is watching what you're thinking about. And your behaviors are going to start lining up behind it if you look about it, if if you look at it and think about it enough. Mm. Yeah, I see it every day. Powerful stuff. Okay, so you also said that obviously you you're um, certified in uh, NLP. Yes, I'm a so, trainer. trainer. You're a trainer, yeah, NLP. So. Can you tell us uh, how we can use maybe NLP to help us with getting the clarity and being intentional and being purposeful and more importantly, getting those daily habits down? Well, let's ask a bigger question here, right? Okay. So all of you that are listening to me right now, including yourself, Talal, right? Yeah. We have something that we want or something that we're struggling with, hmm. right? And so the opposite of what we're struggling with is what we want, mm. which requires a different set of behaviors that we're not doing. Because if we were doing then we'd have what we want, right? So the behaviors are both internal. They're, they're thoughts, they're thought processes in our mind. 
what are we thinking? How are we thinking, right? Well, those lead to emotions. The emotions lead to behaviors. What are the behaviors that you're doing? So you're asking yourself to make some change in your life and you're not showing up and you're not doing it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be having a conversation about how do I adopt a new behavior, right? So what's the real struggle there? But, and this applies to everybody, all of us. If you tell yourself you're going to do something and you don't do it, let's explore that a little bit. But there's only, I would suggest, two major reasons why we don't mm. take the action that we know would lead to our success. Right? One of them is we just forget. We just forget that oh, man, I did that thing in that situation where I just I found myself eating up all the donuts, right? Or I found myself just arguing with somebody instead of listening more, right? Mm. Or I found myself not doing the lead generation calls, the cold calls that I need to do. Right? And I, I, I just didn't even realize that I didn't do them. I was distracted doing other things. So that's just really forgetting and not being aware of a, what I call the choice point. Right? It is a, the choice point where you can choose another behavior. Right. That's a major obstacle for a lot of people. They just don't, they're not aware of it. They just blow through yeah. it. The other one is, okay, so you're aware of the choice point. You're aware of the fact that you're, you're being an, an asshole with your wife. You know, you're arguing with your partner, or you're aware that you're not doing the lead generation, you're aware that you're just overeating and overindulging, right? But you do it anyway, you you choose not to do what you wanted to do instead. What's the opposite behavior of the unwanted behavior that you're choosing not to do? Mm. Right. Yeah. Well, now that we're actually talking about behavior, what can you advise us on in terms of recurring patterns because i know i have some recurring patterns one of them is a burnout pattern which <laughs> i think i'm going through right now um because i apply myself to something i go i go i go and um you know other things I, I'm, I'm going at the same speed um and afterwards i realized that actually I've, uh, I've come all this way. I'm not kind of getting the results I want. I start to get frustrated and, and I've hit burnout. So that's what I know. It's one of my patterns. I've, I'm, I've started to become more and more aware of it. What do you but, want instead of that? Instead of the burnout pattern, what's the opposite of a burnout pattern for you? The opposite of a burnout pattern for me is just going to be, you know, um, being super enthusiastic, energetic, and pursuing the goal with high level of energy and essentially just hitting the goal without burning out. Mm -hmm. So what does without burning out mean? Without any negatives in that, without burning out, what is the opposite of burnout? I guess the opposite of burnout is just acceleration. You just keep accelerating. Accelerating, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm mm. I'm thinking about things like maybe rest and relaxation, recovery from exercise and from action, and both mentally and physically, spiritually, emotionally, mm. self self care, right? Having this life where, yeah, you're taking care of yourself in all of these areas of your life, not to the exclusion of them. You're not running your business so hard that you're not hustling so hard, right? That it's killing your relationships or whatever, or it's killing your body or your sanity. Yeah. 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 The, the, the reason I'm, I'm smiling right now is because when you asked me, what do you want instead? And I was like, I just want to hit the goal and did not even think about self care and, you know, doing all those things. Like in my mind, I'm just like, I'm going to hit the goal, but I'm not hitting the goal. So it, it, like it's, it's just not even there. I'm not even consciously thinking about, I need to, you know, take care of myself, uh, self-preservation, you know, making sure that I get some downtime, some rest time, some recovery time, not even thinking about that. Most people don't think about it. Mm. That's why I love having this conversation. If anybody hearing the sound of my voice right now and hearing the sound of your voice and watching us, okay, take some time to think about what you want. Whereas mm -hmm. we're so full of distractions in life, we tell ourselves we don't know so often that when I asked you and you start thinking about it, you smile because you went to somewhere in your brain. <laughs> You're like, I started to see a couple of things and look at things in a different way because I asked you to do it, right? Mm -hmm. I suggested that you do it and you did it. Mm -hmm. So sit down and take some time to think about what you want. This is cl the clarity component before we even talk about installing new behaviors, but this is the clarity component of it. Get used to this idea that what if you did know? When you say, mm -hmm. I don't know, 
what if you did know? What would that be like? And most people can give me an answer. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. And how important is it to have mentors guide you through this process? Or do you think that it's done best by yourself in isolation where you just have no distractions and, and, and you just have a piece of paper and just write down whatever you can? You mean for this process or for life? In general. Let's, let's talk about this process and then we'll go expand that to life as well. But I, I'm just really interested in this process. It's important to do it by yourself and it's important to have a mentor. Everything okay. we're talking about today is all about having, remember that place, that, this beautiful place I'm in where I have mentors and I have people that I'm mentoring? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a major growth accelerator. And what do you do in that space here, right? What do I do in this space with, the, with mentors and mentees? Well, I get clear on what I want. And then I have somebody help hold me accountable because I talk about it with somebody mm -hmm. else like we're doing. I tell them what's going on with me. And we, we, set some action, we set some action items and we set some goals, some targets, whatever. Some simple behaviors, which we're going to talk about in a little bit here, right? But that's, that's where you start. So having a mentor is, is super important, the accountability partner. But what you do is sit down and create this clarity manifesto, your ideal day. Do it alone by yourself. Go out into nature. Get out of where you are. Don't do it at your desk, for crying out loud. Mm. Don't do it in your house. Get out someplace where the, your environment is not triggering you to think in the confined ways that you're already thinking in. Mm. That's making so much sense to me all of a sudden. <laughs> it's like it was there all along, but just I wasn't thinking about it at all. Yeah, it's just making so much more sense now. Yeah, you know why you were thinking about it? You know why you weren't thinking about it? Why? Because you have a habit of not thinking about it. We're talking about <laughs> developing habits today, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's easier. The brain loves, loves habits. Habits mm. are great, but are your habits helping you? Or are they serving you? Mm. It, it takes far less energy to do what we've always done. And most yeah. of the time, we don't even realize we're doing it. We just yeah. do it, right? Yeah. But that's a habit that mm. you have of not thinking about it. Yeah. So if I were going to help you out real quick and get real coachy for you, I'd say, hey, let's, let's give you something small to do every day. Let's give you a little bit of time, piggyback another habit, because I know you have lots of habits that you do. You have a routine every day, all day. The best way to install a new routine is piggyback it onto something else and create a new habit at the end or the beginning of another habit. And it only takes a few moments to sit down every day and say, what do I want? Mm. Who do I want to be? What's, who's the man I want to become? What do I want my business to look like? How can I show up better in relationships? Mm. How do I improve my financial situation? Not, not how do I improve it, but if I, what do I want that to look like? Right. That's okay. the clarity component. And forgetting about the how. Okay. Yeah. So, well, for example, if I'm writing down, let's say about my financial situation, instead of saying, um, you know, I, I want my you know, business to grow and I want to have this much money, I want to paint a picture with my words. So I should be saying things like, um, you know, I've just put down a deposit for my new car of this much, et cetera, et cetera. Is, is, that, is that the sort of thing that um, I, I should be doing when I'm writing down the Clarity Manifesto? Include that as well. Okay. But the more important factors are things like who is the man I am becoming, right? Okay. How am I showing up in relationships? Like, what does this guy look like? How does he interact with people? What is the impact he's having? What are his characteristics and his qualities? We're talking about things like, you know, maybe discipline, and describing how you're disciplined and how you're taking care of yourself, right? So that you're, you're thriving in all of the areas of your life and you're not just hustling every day so hard that things are falling apart around you while they look good on the screen, right? Yeah. How yeah. does that person behave in the world? Who is this man? What are mm -hmm. his behaviors and activities? Writing those down, right? And then if right. you want to add the fancy stuff, like mm. the cars and the house and the business, you can write those down by all means, enjoy life. Mm. But it really starts with you showing up in here and who becoming who you want to become. And that takes clarity and it takes being willingness to be aware of who you are and write down who you want to become. See, William, what you're feeding me right now is literally a breath of fresh air. 
because suddenly oh, <laughs> everything makes so much more sense. And I feel like, oh yeah, like I can do that. I, I can totally do that. This totally makes sense. And I, 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 this is exactly what I'm missing because when I look at what's, uh, what's happening right now with me, um, these are the actual things I'm not doing. I'm not really kind of, you know, taking care of myself. I'm not actually detaching myself from my normal environments and exposing myself to new environments, which I totally believe in, by the way. I, I, I believe in the fact that you need to expose yourself to new environments. I just haven't been doing it because like you said, I have a habit of not thinking about it. Um, so your so, habits, in other words, your habits and patterns aren't working for you right now. Some of them are, a lot of them are, but mm. what we're, we're talking about the ones that aren't working because that's when yeah. anytime we're talking about how do I install a new habit or a new behavior or make change, what we're talking about is how do I change what's not working or what I don't have to what I want to work and what I want to have instead, right? So that's what we're pointing our attention to right now, those things that aren't working well. Right. Right. So essentially what we're trying to do is not actually cancel a habit, but what we're doing is we're just switching it for a better one. You can cancel a habit. You can do both. You can oh, okay. cancel an old habit. And, and, and when you do, when you do cancel a habit, you switch it for it's your, I think, I think I know what you're alluding to. It's mm -hmm. often easier to replace a habit with another habit mm -hmm. than it is to just not have a habit or cancel a habit. It's easier to cancel and replace. Right. Okay. And this goes with mindset also, right? Everything is with your mindset. Mm -hmm. If you're having thoughts, your, your thoughts lead to your behaviors and your actions, right? Ultimately, that's what it is. So what are you thinking in your head? What are you doing that's become a habit that's causing you to not take the action that you know you need to take to get the results you want and then cancel and replace those thoughts? But that's a whole other topic we haven't talked about. <laughs> and I don't know if you want to talk about it, but it's one of the things I'm most excited about. You know, well, let's it, do it. Let's, let's do it. Go, let's go, let's go, let's go, go down the rabbit hole. Let's do it. Let's do this. So it starts with this idea that we can, what I said when we first started this conversation, this, you're in control of this. How do you gain control of it? You have to be aware of what you, what's going on up there. What, you have to be aware of the thoughts that you're thinking that are leading to your behaviors and your unwanted emotions. Mm -hmm. right? you, if you, you have to become aware of, okay, I'm judging myself right now. Or I'm being really hard on myself right now. I'm running this routine right now. Or... I'm escaping into overeating or I'm escaping into overworking so I don't have to deal with something, right? Or I'm not listening to my partner. Whatever those things that you want to do, anything in your brain, this is what I call clearing out your mindset, right? You have to become aware of what the heck is going on up here so you can change it. And we'll talk about what you want to change it to in a minute, but that starts with awareness. And the best, fastest way to get to that awareness is through meditation. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm going to give everybody a simple meditation right now that you can do every day, and this will change your life. So we, you know, we talked about clarity mm -hmm. a little bit before, and we, then we talked about what you, what's not working versus what you want. And I'm going to show you through this process of meditation how to merge the two, how to merge this, this clarity of what you want and this future person you want to become and where you are now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, meditation can help you get there. I'm going to show you how. Okay. So sitting for 10 minutes every day. and just dropping your thoughts. It's all you need to do. Just drop your thoughts. There's a thought, just drop it, okay? That's all I'm asking you to do. 10 minutes, if you wanna go longer, go longer. But everybody can do 10 minutes. And what that starts to do is it develops this prefrontal cortex muscle of being aware of what you're thinking. Oh man, it's so noisy in here. I didn't realize how noisy this was, God. And you, drop, you start dropping those thoughts, but then you start to get really good at it. Then you start to become aware of, oh, there goes that kind of thought. There goes a judgment thought. You know, there goes a craving thought. And then you just learn to drop it. And while you're meditating, this is a powerful little tip here. Periodically during your meditation, say, drop that thought. Or say, stop. Or say, cancel. Or just say, come back to your breath. Bring your attention back to your breathing. Mm. You're going to get really good at dropping thoughts. Now, here's the cool part. This is how we're gonna move this into your literal day, okay? Now you're gonna be walking around and you're gonna, you know what you don't want, you know what's not working. You're, you're gonna become more aware of what kind of thoughts are running through your head. Unresourceful thoughts, negative thoughts, things that are leading to unwanted behaviors. And you're gonna be able to go, oh, I'm thinking that thought again. I'm doing that thing again, right? And then you'll be able to say, 
you'll use that verbal cue that I asked you to develop, right? Stop, cancel, or drop that thought. Now you're walking around in your day and you can drop that thought. You can say, drop that thought, or mm. stop, or cancel, or toss it, whatever it is, whatever your cue word is that you've now anchored in to your meditation becomes that keyword in your life for being able to learn to drop thoughts. Mm. This is gonna clean out your mindset. It really is going to get rid of all of the unwanted, unresourceful things that are pulling you in the wrong direction of life, right? Wow, that that's a, yeah, that's a powerful strategy. I love it, and um, I'm I'm definitely going to try that. Let me give you another pointer on this, though, because mm. if you're going to actually sit down and do this, it's important to recognize that you're not going to be able to drop every thought that comes into your brain when you're walking around in the day. Some thoughts are just going to be too strong, and you're going to be thinking them, and you're going to say drop it, and it's not going to drop. What do you do? You keep dropping it. Try it again. Do it again. Do it again. And I don't care if you have to do it a hundred times in a day. Drop that thought, right? Eventually, you're going you're gonna to nail it. You're going to drop it. And you're going to go, ooh, I did it. Or maybe you won't even recognize that you did it. Maybe you'll just do it. And you'll get, you'll, it, maybe it's a small little easy thought that you were able to drop, like the thought of eating a cookie or something, or the thought of maybe, I don't know, drinking, going and drinking a beer, whatever this is, some, some kind of thought, the thought of, the thought of, I'd rather go um, walk around in my yard than do those lead generation calls, right? Something you're going to be able to drop. There's going to be some thought you're going to be able to drop, and you're going to get good at it. And the better you get at dropping those thoughts, the better you're going to get at being able to drop these bigger thoughts that are just overwhelming, that are leading to unwanted behaviors and unwanted emotions. Right, right. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. So you, you just have to keep... You just have to keep at it and then eventually you just be able to do it, right? It's just like a skill. Yeah, we're talking about yeah. the conversation was starting out today on developing new habits and behaviors. Mm. Anything you do enough times with repetition becomes a habit. And if you develop the habit of not being self-critical with yourself or judging others, or if you develop the habit of, of not following through on your cravings and temptations, whatever they are, you're, we're talking about cleaning out your mindset. So you can actually go do what you said you were going to do or that you want to do to become successful. But these, th these new ways of these, this, this ability to catch yourself thinking and cancel it mm. and maybe replace it with a different thought, right? Whatever, maybe not just give yourself some neutral space, get rid of those negative unresourceful thoughts that in itself becomes a habit. And the, the practice of meditation really practices and pounds that into you. So you get really good at it. And eventually, your brain's going to take over for you. It's going to go, oh, okay, I see. We don't look at self-doubt anymore. We ignore it. And we've made a habit of it enough time. So now we just don't look at self-doubt. Right? Or we don't look at frust temptations to be frustrated about stuff. We don't look at that anymore. Mm. Or we, we, we don't overwork ourselves. And when we're tempted to overwork, when we know we should be spending time with our family or exercising or something, we know to catch that and interrupt it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's basically trying to break that thought pattern, which then allows you to, you know, build on that habit and, and, you know, create a behavior where you are essentially, you know, empowering yourself to do what you really want to do, to become who you really want to become. Which yes. And mm -hmm. what is that? That goes back to the clarity manifesto, the ideal day, <laughs> the vision, right? We have yeah. that as our guidepost now. Man, when you have this, when you have a guidepost for who you want to become and how you want your business to look and what you want your life to look like, and you compound that with this self-awareness, well, what am I doing that's not leading to those behaviors and how can I learn to drop those behaviors and adopt new ones, new patterns? Whew, there's nothing you can't accomplish in this world, you know? Yeah, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, my friend, Dave Meltzer, my, yep. I, my coach, if you guys don't know who he is, I want to point out because this guy is a big dog. The movie Jerry Maguire, you know, that was, that was based on Dave Meltzer. So Tom Cruise plays Dave Meltzer in the movie. When mm. Tom Cruise plays you in the movie, you're doing something right in life. So <laughs> Dave Meltzer says he's actually taken all of this one step further. He's developed the habit of creating successful habits. Hmm. So wow. he's not even just talking about what one habit can I create? He's gotten so good at creating successful habits in his life that that in and of itself has become a habit. Wow. That's powerful. Yeah. That's really powerful. Th did he talk about how he managed to do that? Yeah, we, we had that conversation. We did. Part of it was 
my question for him is what do you do when you you're a busy man and you've got all kinds of things going on you talk to hundreds of people every day all day you're flying all over the world mm. how do you enjoy that process or what happens when you just don't feel like doing something that you don't want to do mm. how do you address that and so you know what he does well first of all outsource the stuff you don't want to do and the stuff that you have to do forget about whether or not you want to do it or not just stop checking in with yourself stop running the habit of checking in with how you feel about doing something just mm. do it you know i like that that was, that was that was part of it yeah and and also putting different frames frames around things if there's something that you don't want to do like develop that new habit remember we talked about this earlier if there's something that you know you should be doing that you're choosing not to do mm. then then maybe make a game out of it or just stop checking in with yourself on whether you feel like doing it or not and just do it stop checking in with yourself with how i feel about doing it while you're doing it and just yeah. do it enjoy find some way to enjoy the process be creative play with your brain you know yeah and and, and d d i i'm i'm glad you said that actually because here's the thing i'm i'm sure people in the audience sitting there are thinking oh my god this is seems like a really long tedious process it's going to take ages i don't even know where to start i don't know how long it's going to take well william said it gamify it turn it into a game right have fun with it rather than actually yeah sorry go i on. can tell you no this is <laughs> so this is a new idea if you're not getting the results you want in your life it's because you have a habit of being you who doesn't get the results that you want mm. and how long have you been spending time being you how old are you not you but you the audience you know how old are we we've spent our whole lives getting here we've got the whole rest of our lives to get to hopefully a better place where we want to be in our business and our relationships and our lives right financially and spiritually how long have you been being yourself you still got to keep being yourself every day and it, it to call it a long tedious process is just another way of looking at it in a negative light but it is it hopefully if you engage this path i'll give you some really easy starting points but this is a lifelong journey, right? It always has been a lifelong journey from the moment we were born until we die. It's a lifelong journey. So let's start getting the results we want, right? And, yeah. and, and what the cool thing about this is when you start to practice some of these things like clarity, getting into the habit of looking at what you want for yourself and your future and your business and relationships, when you get into the habit of that, that creates a new habit. Your unconscious mind picks it up for you and it automatically does it for you because you've practiced it enough times, right? Mm -hmm. You get into the habit of dropping your thoughts and clearing out your mindset. Your brain gets good at it and goes, oh, okay, I got it. That's what you want me to do. And I'll start doing it for you. So you can literally turn a depressed person into a happy, uplifted, successful person by having them clean out their mindset with this, these simple practices. Get clear on what you want. Mm -hmm. Get clear on what you want if anything were possible, and then meditate every day for 10 minutes. Drop your thoughts, say cancel periodically through your meditation, and pull that into your waking life every day. So when you catch yourself thinking or doing unresourceful things, you can start to learn to stop and interrupt and drop and do what you wanted to do instead. Do what you said you were going to do when you don't want to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, William, what about the people who are sitting there right now and they're thinking, I'm not going to be able to do that. And they have some excuse. They have limiting beliefs and they could be, I, I don't know what they are, but I'm sure there are going to be people out there right now who are sitting there. They've gone through the whole video, the whole conversation. And there's like, psh, psh, I, I, I'm not going to be able to do it. Well, they're either not finding value in it. It's not resonating with them, which is fine. Mm -hmm. Can't appeal to everybody or, like you said, making excuses not to do it. You have to see the value in doing something, right? If you saw the value in doing something, you're gonna you're gonna do it, right? Mm -hmm. If if you're not if there's no value in what I'm saying, you're not gonna do it. But oh, so I I guess let me ask you this: what do you, what actually do you mean by that? Who is who is the person who's sitting there saying, "I hear this, but I'm just not gonna do it"? I don't think it's the people um, who say I won't do it. It's the fact that they just believe they can't do it. Okay, so they can't change. Basically, they're, they're stuck ah, in who they so are. And they it, can't change. Yes. So when you're talking about it, you're saying they can't. They don't believe that they can change. Yes. Well, now we're talking about limiting beliefs. Mm. Okay. 
It's another really cool conversation. <laughs> it's, everything just fits together, right? Like it it does. <laughs> If you don't believe you can do something, guess what? You get to change your beliefs. You get to change your beliefs. Just because you believe it doesn't make it true, doesn't make it false, doesn't mean it's not true. But a belief is just something, it's a thought that you've thought about over and over and over and over again until you believe it's true. It looks, feels, and sounds real and true to you. It's nothing more than a belief. The good news behind that is you get to change, you get to choose what your beliefs are with some practice. And it starts with questioning your beliefs. You know, I can't do this. That's just a limiting belief. You've said it so many times. What if, what, let me ask you this. What if you could do it? What would that be like? Or has anybody else done it ever? Or will you ever be able to do it? Will you ever be able to change at some point? Or have you ever been able to change? Mm. So we just start attacking and pounding on that limiting belief that I can't do it. I can't change. It's always been this way. So it's always going to be. We start attacking that by challenging it. Has it always been true? Is it always going to be true? Has it never been not true? Mm. Right? Has it been true for somebody else? Or has it been, can somebody else change? Has somebody else ever done what you wanted to do? Yeah. Yeah. And, and for people in the audience who might be sitting there, you know, thinking these thoughts, I'm going to challenge you right now. Look at William's story that he shared with us right at the beginning. And this is exactly why I get all my guests to share their stories right at the start. He said he was homeless. He said he was addicted to drugs. He said he was living on the streets. And now he is in a place where he's helping other people's like change their lives and he's doing millions of dollars of business and it's just growing. Do you think that William is the same person internally as he was back then? No. Externally, maybe yes. Internally, no. So if you're actually sitting there thinking, I can't change, I can't do this, etc. Well, William did it, right? So what's your excuse for thinking that you won't be able to change? Yes, it will take some effort. Yeah, it'll take some time. But what's your excuse that you're sitting there thinking you will never be able to change? I want to, yes, beautiful. When you ask the question, what is your excuse? Or why, when you ask the question, why haven't you succeed, succeeded? Or what's stopping you from succeeding? If you ask these questions, mm. then you get what comes out of your mouth is this living belief. Whatever you say, which follows what's your excuse for not succeeding or what's your reason for not succeeding, which means being anywhere you want to be in your life, right? In any one of the five areas, relationship, finances, um, career, success, physical, spiritual, whatever, any excuse that comes out of your mouth is a limiting belief. Mm. So ask yourself that question because now that we have that limiting belief, now we can start attacking it and challenging it yeah. and start thinking something new. Because like we said, you know, awareness first what am i thinking what are, what are the beliefs i have and then we can start interrupting them and challenging them and we're talking about repatterning again when you challenge and pat repattern something enough times it becomes a habit mm -hmm. now all of a sudden because you challenge that old belief like i can't do this right you challenge that enough times all of a sudden it's it's wait a minute what if i could and then, mm -hmm. then then and then it becomes i've got this i can do this yeah yeah and that's possible for everyone, right? Like it, it takes yes. some effort, it takes some time, but it's possible for everyone. Yeah, we're talking about redesigning our life here. That's why you and I are hanging out, talking <laughs> about how can we redesign our mindset and, and therefore our lives, right? So Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So William, you have, first of all, I, I do want to talk about one more thing, which is okay. the fact that you talked about challenging your limiting beliefs, etc. But the way you did that was by asking questions. And I want to highlight that because there might be people thinking that are like, how, how do I do that? How do I actually challenge myself? How do I challenge my own thoughts, my own limiting beliefs, etc.? Well, you do that with questions because guess what? That's exactly what William was doing. And he was asking questions. And as he was asking, like literally, I, I was thinking about the, the answers. I was like, what, 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 what is it? What is my, what? what is the answer to this question that William's asking me right now? And they were coming up and yeah, it, that's how you do it. You ask questions. It's simple. You want to that. tackle any of those right now? Just go with it. <laughs> Give me one that popped up. What's your excuse? What's not working in your life? You don't have to tell me that, but what's your excuse for you not succeeding in that area? 
I don't have enough time. That's right. Stop telling yourself <laughs> that. You have 24 hours. I'm asking you to challenge that idea that I don't have enough time. Mm. What is a more empowering belief? What is the opposite of that belief that I don't have enough time? That if you believed it would change everything. I use my time purposefully. Yes. Has that ever been true for you? Yes. Yes, it is true. Mm. So you've got these two conflicting beliefs, right? It's yeah. not about what is true. It's about what is useful. There's a, qu there's a quick little process. It's actually, this actually takes some more work, so we're not going to get too far into it. But I'm just, because this is actually something, it's an experiential process I train people. But what would it be like if you could reprogram your brain mm. whenever it thought of, I don't have enough time, that it would just automatically go to, I use my time purposely. Mm. Yeah, that would be amazing. Automatically go there and think that. So since we've been talking about awareness and being able to change, repattern our beliefs, the awareness of if you, every time you tell yourself, I don't have enough time, just stop. Just like when you're meditating, stop. And then replace it with, I use my time purposefully, or I will find time to do the things that are important to me. Mm. Yeah. Or, I am a master of my calendar, whatever, whatever that is for you. <laughs> Catch yourself. I don't want to hear you saying, I don't have enough time anymore. Stop telling yourself that. When you tell yourself that, adopt the new belief. The more empowering belief is, I use my time purposefully, right? And what, what do you think happens? That's going to change your behaviors when you start believing that. Your beliefs lead mm. to your behaviors. They affect your behaviors. They inform your behaviors. Yeah. So let's install that new belief. I'm purposeful with my time. A master of my calendar, right? I, I find time for the things that are most important to me mm. and look at that and tell yourself that more often than you tell yourself the old belief and the old belief will atrophy. See, I've, I've, this is absolute gold, William, but I've just had a bit of an epiphany as well. And it's just the fact that I think for me, I have not put, I haven't made it a, a, a what you can call um an urgent thing or a thing of importance where um, I am spending time thinking about these things. I haven't, I haven't made it a priority. And I think that's, that's maybe what other people in the audience might be suffering to as well. They haven't made this a priority where they are reevaluating their life. They are thinking about, you know, what are my limiting beliefs? Why am I thinking this way? What are the habits that are not working for me? And what do I want instead? Because I know I'm not, that's I haven't made it a priority. Saying. You haven't made it a priority. And there's mm -hmm. many, there are many reasons why people don't make this, this a priority. And when I say this a priority, I mean stopping and thinking about what you want your life to look like and who you mm -hmm. want to become. Back to the original conversation. Making that a priority. Because if you don't look at that, where are you going? Yeah. You're just a victim of circumstance and life. And yeah, you make some decisions in the moment here and there, but... Those decisions are not in line with anything because you haven't sat down and thought about where you really want to be and go in life and who you want to become. Mm. This is the most important thing we can do is to sit down and think about what do you want and who do you want to become? What do you want yeah. your life to look like? Mm. That gives us the, 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 that informs all of our behaviors and decisions going forward. You know, it, now we have a roadmap to follow making that a priority is the most important thing. When I sit down with a client and we start working together, the first mm -hmm. thing we talk about, well, first is what's not working because that tells that, that gives them this idea, what's broken in your life, what's not working, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's, what do you want instead? This clarity yeah. process. And you have to train people because people, when you ask them what they want, they'll start telling you everything they don't want. Mm -hmm. Like, no, 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 no. What do you want, <laughs> right? I don't want to hear about what you don't want. What do you yeah. want? Haven't, yeah. They haven't given it much thought. And we also, we also don't spend time thinking about what we want because we don't believe it's possible to have what we want. We learn that at a young age or whatever. Or we think it's going to be too hard, right? Or whatever. But those are just limiting beliefs again. But if you mm -hmm. don't start with the clarity process, then your stuff's not going to come up. You know, looking at stuff and what you want starts to bring up your stuff. Well, now I've got to take action. Um, well, now I'm recognizing that I'm just holding myself back by my perceptions or what I believe is possible because maybe my parents told me this or I learned it in school. Yeah. You know, I never learned to challenge those assumptions and beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. Freaking anything is possible. <laughs> anything is possible. So. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So, William, 
talk to us about some of your daily habits and rituals that you practice that allow you to essentially perform at such a high level where not only are you accelerating your life, but you're helping others accelerate their lives. You know, I, I live my life pretty freely because I'm, I have freedom to live my life the way I want to live it. And there are moments and times in my day where I have things that I need to do that I don't want to do, but I do them anyway, right? But some of my habits are, are meditation in the morning. I, I don't have a very specific morning routine, but it always usually includes some sort of gratitude and looking at my ideal future self. Mm-hmm. I love getting in touch with that man and let, seeing who he is and how he's behaving in the world. Um, and so the meditation, obviously exercise, um, very cognizant about being balanced and doing self care. I love to go see my friends and make time to take walks in nature. Um, but you know, all of these things are really sort of idiosyncratic to my personality and having somebody else do these things is not really necessarily going to improve their own lives. It's just find out what works for yourself and create some habits and patterns for yourself. You know, that's what it's really about by using that clarity process to see what you want and then say, Mm -hmm. now I can start to figure out how to go get that stuff when I can reverse engineer it. I can put this stuff, these behaviors and actions on my calendar, right? And start creating new habits and breaking Mm -hmm. old habits. That's what it is for you or for anybody else. Find out what you want, reverse engineer the process you think will work, put it on your calendar, create new habits. Get rid of old habits that don't lead in that direction. Yeah. Like, yeah. When I say that, I get pumped <laughs> up. I'm thinking, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it I feel your energy. That simple. I feel your energy here. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. That's great. Um, and, you know, it seems, I mean, the fact that being purposeful with meditation is also really important because, you know, I, I meditate, but now after this conversation, I'm certainly realizing, Hey, I'm meditating, but I'm not being really purposeful with it. Like I try to be like, okay, my, my mind is going blank, focus on my breath, but like, that's about it. Like it's not going any further, but when it comes like dropping thoughts and taking charge of what you're thinking, et cetera, et cetera, like awesome. I love it. Do you know how I get people to meditate when I connect this idea that meditation is not about meditating, right? Mm. It's not about having a clear mind. Yes, there is a lot of value in and with the different types of brain waves that you go through and, and for stress relief that you get from having a clear mind when you're meditating. But yeah. my purpose is to connect them with this idea that when you're meditating and you learn to watch your thoughts and you learn to say, cancel, stop, whatever, drop that thought come back yeah. to your breath. When you learn that, you can pull it into your waking everyday life and clean up your mindset. When people mm-hmm. see, oh, this is a tool that I can actually use for something purposeful and meaningful, right? Yeah. That's, when they, that's when they jump on board with meditation. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people will think meditation is sitting down and I'm not doing anything and it's not productive, whatever. No, I'm saying you need to practice that because it's a strength that you're going to develop and it's a tool that you can use to clean up your mindset and get the results that you want in your waking life. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And, and I'm seeing it as a tool in completely different light now, as in before, like I, you know, I'm meditating in, in the sense that, you know, I'm going to close my mind. I'm going to, you know, empty my thoughts, et cetera, et cetera. But now it's being more purposeful with this. So I love it. Um, and my final question really is William. I mean, this has been an absolutely phenomenal conversation. Um, and uh, I think we have touched on so many important things. And to be honest with you, the amount of value I got of it is absolutely insane. So I know that other people will get tremendous value out of this. Mm -hmm. And you are, you know, doing some really amazing work with so many people. So I would highly highly encourage everybody in the audience to actually reach out to William um, and make sure that you just, you know, start a conversation, just say hi, just say, you know, how are you doing, etc. cetera. Um, go check out some of the work he's doing. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that with the links and things like that, but go check out some of the stuff work he's doing. It's absolutely phenomenal. So with that, William, um, where can people go to get in touch with you right now and how can they help you? I prefer Facebook. It's just so easy. You can find me at William in Seattle. It's all spelled out, William in Seattle. That's my Facebook tag. You can find me there. You'll see my, my picture here. Um, I, don't, I don't have a lot of public facing stuff out there, so you're not gonna be able to find out a lot about me other than just reading through my, my Facebook posts. And uh, that's, that's about it. I'm not really big on social media. Mm. Most, of the, most of the stuff I do is one-on-one. 
Yeah, but you're your face. You're very active on Facebook. Do you put on loads of posts on there? Because um, I know it comes up on my feed, and I'm always checking. Oh, there's another one for me. <laughs> it's great. Um, but the the fact is the amount of focus you have on value in each and every single one of those posts, uh, unbelievable. So again, guys, make sure you go ahead and check it out. Um, is there anything that we can help you with right now, William? You're helping me right now spread the message. You know, <laughs> there's nothing I'd rather be doing with my life than mm. right now having this conversation with you and having other people hear it and potentially then getting some value out of it. You know, that's just what, all I want in this world is to help spread this message that you're in charge of this, mm. give you some tools on how to, how to take charge of it, you know, and, and we're, this is ancient wisdom, my friend, this mm. is ancient wisdom. It goes back a long way. We've been talking about this for hundreds of thousands of years, maybe. And I'm just showing up here, you know, telling you what I've learned and repeating the same message and hoping to pass it on so that the people within the sound of my voice We'll start repeating this message also. It's one of self-empowerment, whatever it looks like. It's one of self-empowerment and service to others. That's how you can help me, man. Spread the message. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. And and for people in the audience, I mean, how amazing was this conversation? We talked about so many things, which actually, you know what? Most of the time, nobody talks about. And even if they do talk about a surface level conversation, like William said, he is actually giving you tools. So he's not just like motivating you, inspiring you, saying, you can do this, et cetera, et cetera. No, it's actually giving you tools like do X, Y, Z, and guess what? You are going to get there. And, you know, I, I know, guess what? I know quite a lot about, of this stuff. And, you know, like, like William identified, like I, I'm in the habit of not thinking about it. Um, I'm not being purposeful with my meditation. I'm not being purposeful with my time uh, like I want to be. And, you know, I have certain limiting beliefs that I need to work through. Um, but how do you create habits? How do you, you know, go ahead and create certain thought patterns, essentially, which you, you don't have previously, simply because you're not in the habit of not uh, having them. So some real gold here. And to be honest with you, I, I, this is, I, I don't say this lightly and I don't say this often. I'm going to go back and watch this again, maybe a few times just to kind of absorb everything because there's just so much stuff that you talked about. William, oh, thank man, you yes. so great, much great, for your time, man. Great, great call. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. I really appreciate it, man. Um, but the, the value you dropped was, was just absolutely tremendous. Um, and I'd love to have you back on. Maybe we can go for round two and, and you know, dig deeper on some of the other rabbit holes. We got a lot of more cool stuff to talk about, my friend. <laughs> we, should awesome. do like, we should like totally do like a mini series of these. I think it will be just phenomenal. Yeah, I love it. Well, thanks for your time today. Appreciate it. Yo, you're very welcome, my brother. Um, all right, guys. As always, I will highly encourage you guys to go ahead and share this message with somebody who's close to you, who needs to hear these particular ideas, these concepts which are so advanced and so elusive because nobody else is really talking about them. But I think they will make a massive impact, not just in your life, but literally anybody that you share with because we are all struggling with something, right? And William's given us some amazing tools that we can use starting, well, right now, literally right now, like jump off this call and go for a meditation, like go for it, right? Or start writing your clarity manifesto. It's so amazing. And I will also encourage you guys to subscribe to this channel because guess what? This is where we learn from the best in terms of how they created this tremendous amount of success in their life. And I want to continuously serve you guys. And by you subscribing, it helps the channel grow and allows me to actually bring on more amazing people and also just a, a great way for me to just serve you guys. So at the end of the day, make sure that you are following what we talked about here, all these tips, these tools, these hacks, these whatever you want to call these, but they're just absolute gold. So with that, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Stay awesome. Hustle hard. William, thank you so much, brother. Hopefully we'll connect again soon. Absolutely.